So we are now less than one week away from the PlayStation 5 Pro releasing, and we should see some content start to go up at the beginning of this upcoming week. Apparently there's like an embargo for the unboxing, and then an embargo just for the full review of the system. So we'll see some opinions and stuff getting thrown around, and obviously a very good look at the console ahead of its release date. But... Of course, things are already leaking out anyway, and some of it was was legitimately posted. For example, the box. Others, well, people decided to just unbox it themselves and even start kind of taking the system apart a bit, giving us a new look at it. And I have to give Sony credit here. Actually, a good change. Something Sony's done that, hey, maybe, maybe they were paying attention. So if you guys enjoy this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Now, I know that the PS5 Pro has been quite controversial in the idea of should it exist, should it not. The bottom line is Sony's releasing the thing one way or the other, and they'll still sell it next to the current PS5. So now, I, really me anyway, and I'm sure many other people are curious about how it's going to run games. And then also, I, I feel like that the teardown and what's going on inside of this system and maybe what we can take away from it going into plans for their next generation because surprise surprise they're underway right now behind the scenes I think most people know that by now but if you didn't I mean recently uh, we actually heard from one of the CEOs with Sony and PlayStation that they started working on the PS5 Pro uh, before the PS5 released to stores so about five years ago well in this case the PS6 probably similar timeline and now again we're seeing like box art and uh, images of the box get out there. And uh, it's funny because I'm seeing people point out two different things with the box right now. One is this disc-free console, saying it flaunts its disc-free nature, which, yes, I, the, the PS5 Slim, the digital one, has the same exact logo there. I mean, you have to at least convey what's in it to customers so they know if they need, say, an attachment for it. In this case, that extra disc drive that you would you would slap on the side of it. It seems pretty straightforward. I, I don't know if they were just seeing it as it being kind of a a joke or funny or something. I mean, that's just legitimate information for the consumer. Uh, but then on top of that, there's no 8K logo on the box. So maybe Sony learned a lesson there after the whole PS5 thing. Also, there's just not many people who care about 8K. I, I've asked people in the comments before, let me know if you have an 8K TV. Let me know down in the comments. And I've really not, I haven't seen many people go, oh yeah, I, 8K obviously, I mean, I, how would I not use that, why would I not use that, there's just not a lot of content out there right now for 8K, and it is sort of that chicken and egg situation, because somebody has to get the consumers moving in that direction, maybe Sony will do it with the next system, the PS5 Pro though, technically can do 8K in some games, uh, I think uh, what, Gran Turismo 7 as an example, um, can do 8K, now, the other thing with this are the the covers, which I still don't know why Sony has done this. It's so strange. Ryan actually had a good point on this one. I think he had it in his Let's Talk PlayStation. Uh, but it's just it's just going to be more work for them. I had kind of this optimistic view of, oh, maybe Sony will let you have an exchange program for it. Honestly, I, that seems very optimistic. And if you bought slim plates, again, I just want to do this as a reminder, for the PS5 Pro, return them as soon as you can if possible. Because it seems like Sony will eventually stock PlayStation 5 Pro plates. And that, that would be the time to start buying them. All right, So if you bought plates now looking to dress up your PS5 Pro on release, not the case. As we had these images actually surface over on Reddit as somebody... Again, it basically what's happening right now is these systems are sitting already in warehouses. But also in back rooms at retail stores. So think about like Best Buy, Walmart... Uh, Think about it. GameStop, any any real game store or store that covers gaming, probably has these right now in in the back. All right, especially if they took pre-orders for them. So naturally, some people maybe who work there who are are buying it or have the pre-order in decided they would unbox, and there you go, we get pictures of it just like that. So yeah, street date stuff gets broken all the time. It would get broken when I was working at stores forever ago. It was more common than you'd expect. Still goes on nowadays. But here's the interesting thing: as we see one of the plates being taken off here. Um, on the, uh, actually further down here. So people were asking, of course, when it comes to the NVMe and it comes to like the, the CMOS battery and stuff, uh, what exactly would be the options with this? So we have this image and this is very interesting, um, when looking at this. So obviously this is on the other side. This is the, uh, when you have it laying down, this is like the, the right side of it. This is flipped over with the front of it facing to the left. And on this side, we have our spot for the disk drive down here. 
So that's just how it is with the slim. You actually just slot it in and it clicks into place. There you go. But then we have two other doors. This door, clearly for NVMe usage. So you would be upgrading your storage there. And I, I will, I think that's something I'm going to do is upgrade the storage in the PS5 Pro immediately. I have a four terabyte NVMe that I, I have in this PS5 that the Pro is going to basically be a drop-in replacement for here in the... Um, in the gaming room. So I, I think I'll do that. Maybe I'll record it. It's, it wouldn't be a long video, I, I assume. I mean, I did one before, and that's a bit older. I think I could do a better job even showcasing it. And maybe people would just be curious to see if it's any different at all with the PS5 Pro, which maybe not drastically different, but eh, still could be interesting. Now, the door right here is apparently for the CMOS battery. Now, the CMOS battery itself is something that most people won't have to change out, but some will. And the, the issue we run into is if you look at a PlayStation 4 uh, board, which is one that was kind of annoying to get to, right? You had to actually take the system apart. The PS5 is the same deal. In fact, the PS5 is actually a little more annoying than the PS4. Nintendo actually had this figured out with the Wii and the Wii U, where you had a little door on the bottom. Some of you, I'm sure, remember this. Little screwdriver, you unscrew it, you pop it out, and it's a little, little, little piece that would come out the bottom, and boom, there's your CMOS battery. You change it out, it's like a 2025 or something like that, and uh, that's it, you're good to go. In this case, it looks like Sony may have heard people when it came to that C-bomb situation, which is, in the future, if your battery dies in the system, and you're not able to connect the internet, or if it doesn't exist, then it's like the, the system it gets confused and can't figure it out. Well, they actually fixed that in a firmware update, and now it seems like they realize, okay, maybe there will be a situation where the battery just dies in the future. That could be more common than we're expecting because the C-bomb thing was discovered. So here we now have a door that seems like one screw very similar to the, the NVMe slot, which most likely is, a, I guess, a Phillips head screw. Might even have the little PlayStation logo and stuff on it remove that. I assume it's going to be a pretty easy thing to pop out, pop new one in, and that's it. So that is awesome for repairability and also technically preservation of the system for people who aren't necessarily going to go all the way down to the board level to replace this little battery. And this is absolutely a case where I want to give the manufacturer, the platform holder, some credit uh, because this would have been very easy to just be like, nah, whatever. We fixed it in a firmware patch. It's, just keep it normal. It's not, don't use another piece of metal and a screw and stuff to make it easily accessible. In this case, they actually worked around that. So that's great. And it's something I'll certainly be checking in on here. And this might be something that continues going forward. Maybe it sets up a new trend for Sony when it comes to the, be able to access CMOS batteries for the PS6 and so on. Who knows? Maybe there's another revision at some point for the PlayStation 5 before it's all all said and done for like the regular base one uh, that kind of builds off of what they've done with the slim like think about the ps3 how many revisions we had there i understand the ps4 technically had one revision but i, I guess you never know maybe this is just a longer generation they want to do some other piece of hardware to close things out with a very cheap offering maybe that's something they do okay access for cmos so that's good stuff there hopefully they keep doing that and then finally the enhancement list for games that are supported by the ps5 pro and the, and the features of pssr and the extra horsepower there has continued to grow it's now at 88 which i believe is now double what the playstation 4 pro launched with back in 2016 so it seems like there will at least be plenty of games to try out in the system, and that's sort of where I am now, is kind of looking through and trying to pick out games that I want to test with. Final Fantasy is obvious for me, Rebirth, that was one that I definitely noticed in terms of it being a bit softer looking or blurry in performance mode as opposed to fidelity, and if it can truly give me fidelity but at 60 FPS, that would actually be I think game changing really for that title specifically. But then I look at things like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart when it was shown off and it just did not look that impressive really. I guess Spider-Man 2 uh, could look pretty cool. And then we have games that aren't out yet like Wolverine uh, is on there. Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater is another game that's looked very good in trailers and I feel like could look incredible on the PS5 Pro. So that's maybe another one to check out there. I started up Dragon Age Veilguard. I, I guess I'll still be I'll be playing that, I guess, still uh, when this system comes out. So maybe that's one I can throw in there. I would like to see Silent Hill 2 get thrown on here because I think that is one that uh, could use some of the extra horsepower when it comes to like the ray tracing and... 
a sharper image in terms of just overall clarity for that performance mode. I mean, it's a good looking game, but I just feel like it can look even better with that higher frame rate. And I guess for people who are truly plugged into the PlayStation ecosystem, hopefully this PSVR 2 list grows a bit because technically the PS5 Pro should help quite a bit with some of those PSVR 2 titles when it comes to image clarity and just frame rate, refresh rate. Very important when it comes to VR games in general for them to look as good as possible, but then also run at a higher frame rate for motion sickness and not breaking immersion. There was also an entire unboxing that that leaked out online and then they pulled it down. It seemed to be just a retail store that Got a bit antsy after I'm sure getting in uh, the several PS5 Pros, which not a great idea to, to post that up online. And I guess they realized that and pulled it back down or Sony told them to pull it back down. But otherwise, it just seemed like a pretty standard unboxing. And we'll be seeing many of those here in the coming days. But you know what? Typically, when new hardware comes out, I get very, very excited. And you know, I'm, I'm getting a, a bit excited here for the PS5 Pro but not on the same level as here's this new piece of hardware that's going to set up the generation. And that tends to be what happens with just pro systems in general. But still, I think it'll be a lot of fun to check it out and at least give you guys some of my thoughts on it. And of course, tear it down. And for me, one of the more interesting things is some of the engineering that went into making this possible. But hey, let me know what you guys think about this down below, especially when it comes to Sony. Kind of a bit of a curveball there with that CMOS door. I was not expecting that one. Do you think that's something they'll continue moving forward? And do you think it's something that's the result of that recent C-bomb situation? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.